Greetings from Mars. It's Sol 3 at the Mars Desert Research Station, MDRS Crew 188 mission, our analog here in the Utah desert. I'm here with a special guest for the Commander's Daddy Log. I believe this is our only the, the first uh, broadcast from Mars, but plenty more footage to come. I'd like to introduce Dr. Sarah Jane Pell, my uh, crewmate, our resident artist, um, and she has an amazing background in Obviously, we're all linked by the International Space University. We're all alumni. And so, without further ado, I give you Sarah Jane Powell. <laughs> Hi, greeting, greetings, um, Earthlings. I'd love to be with you, but uh, it's a beautiful day here on Mars. Um, as Ryan said, I'm here as the artist in residence for the crew. I'm also the journalist in residence for the crew during uh, Crew 188 um, mission here. And uh, my role is to bring something of the cultural and aesthetic perspective uh, to the mission, but to also engage in transdisciplinary research activities, outreach activities, educational activities, and to work on the, the human dimensions of what we're doing here. So there's a lot of, little bit of play and performance, there's a lot of documentation and orchestration and experimentation. Mm -hmm. Um, my background, uh, I have a PhD in human performance uh, underwater, which is a visual aid, arts based uh, program. And I have combined that with technical research in, um, as a commercial diver, uh, working with human movement, um, working with more increasingly space sciences and uh, space life sciences to support the body in extreme environments. So I'm particularly excited to be here. Most of my work has been underwater. So getting a sense of how we conduct um, activities for moon Mars simulation, in this case a, a Mars simulation here on Earth, is pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. So we don't have any water here, um, but we do have simulated spacesuits. There's one behind us. One of, it looks more alien than the other traditional ones you might have seen already in a couple of photos. Yeah. Um, and you've had your, your first taste of MDRS EVA on the first EVA. Yes. Um, maybe you can share a little bit of that experience and you know how it sizes up with other things you've done. Maybe they want to know a little bit about uh, a couple of the other underwater and how it relates to that as well. Yeah, sure. So uh, some of the work that I've done as a commercial diver have been not only using scuba systems, but surface supplied systems, which are great big helmets with a life support umbilical that is operated from from the is surface. Is that SNUBA or is that? That's called SSBA. SSBA. Surface okay. supplied breathing apparatus. So commercial divers tend to use those. They're, they're hard hats. Uh, they provide um, constant monitoring from the surface and that umbilical, that tether, gives the, the surface crew uh, the opportunity to haul you in and haul you up at all times to, to control your descent rate um, and to give you the, the space and freedom to be able to work, particularly in high risk operational environments when you're using tools, you're undertaking construction right. and you're wanting to go to greater depths. Scuba doesn't allow for that. So you don't, you can't carry cylinders and tools together. Right. Yeah. So with that background, I began using my interest in visual and performing arts to create some of my own systems, my own helmets, my own breathing systems, so that I could perform and explore choreography underwater. Cool. And uh, from there, I got very comfortable with wearing life support, designing life support systems, and I, I've been able to combine some of my interests to be a simulation astronaut in various projects. So with a, a fantastic European Commission supported project in 2016 or from 2013 to 16, mm -hmm. uh, project Moonwalk uh, gave me the opportunity to test the Gandolfi 2, a COMEX spacesuit underwater as a moon analog. Nice. So we could play out with the 1-6 gravity underwater um, and use gesture control interactions with a, a rover on the seabed floor to plan for scenarios, cooperative human robotic scenarios for future lunar missions. So I had that in mind, I've got that experience and when we were out on EVA here at the Mars Desert Research Station, I was, I was actually really surprised that there was a very similar 
sense of um, experience and that the landscape itself has a lot to do with that because it transports you in your imagination and mind. Should we show it to them? Should oh, why not? Should we just cut in? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Here we go, we're going out the window. Whoa! So, it's like looking through the cupola here. We're in the science lab, I'm looking back. through a, an enormous window straight out into a landscape that looks like we are on the red planet. We can't help feeling that sense of isolation, of desolation, um, and and um, I guess that ever ever present sense that there is a risk to us, that we need to be prepared, that we need to suit up if we want to go out there because out there is harsh. We are exposed, we are vulnerable, and we need to plan for that. So when we we put on the spacesuits, mm -hmm. a different suit actually. So they have a few different types of suits here at MDRS. We went out on rovers, um, we went out to explore the surface, we had to deal with things like limited visibility mm -hmm. from the shape of the helmet, we had to work with comms, with uh, our HABCOM team here, um, we, which is effectively like a mission control for us, or a supervisory control, yeah. and we had to inter interact as a team to ach achieve our objectives for the EVA, um, to make sure everyone was alright. To scope it to navigate, which was yeah. uh, was that was one of the tricky things. Yeah, we uh, we had dropped a waypoint estimation of where we thought it would be based mm -hmm. off of previous information from the crew, mm -hmm. and um, we still haven't figured out what the blip was, but it wasn't quite on, so we had to kind of go with our instinct. Uh, we knew that the site was directly east of where we're located in the habitat, kind of where we were just showing you out the window. Yes. And so we stopped and we kind of surveyed and said, well, we think that might be the site there. Um, and we were like, let's stop here and investigate and, you know, radio back to the hab saying, you know, we're going to check out this site. And it was, it was the site. So we kind of nailed it right away. Um, but, you know, with these kinds of things, it's possible that you might not find the specific site or location. Uh, especially on an early mission uh, for people who haven't been out there. I mean, I haven't been out here in 11 years yeah. in a simulation, so um, I've never even heard of this particular site before. So it was, yeah, it's, it's just, it is raw exploration yes. with all those added difficulties of, you know, what you're wearing and what you're doing and how you're operating too. Yeah. That, that's very true. Yeah. And uh, we were very surprised, like at every step, we were, there, we were, there were new features that we could see that could just delight us, that gave mm -hmm. you that real sense that we are true explorers out here. Yeah. It is, even if you haven't been here for a while, it looks new, it's it's still about uncovering things and operating as a team. So making sure that we had enough airflow, making sure that packs were adjusted yeah. to be ergonomic and, and things like that. This is kind of what I do underwater. So I'll give you a sense, here's an image from- Roll the clip. Roll the clip. <laughs> yeah. This is a bit lo-fi, but uh, here's an image uh, from the project Moonwalk um, simulation trials in Marseille in 2016. So even though we didn't have that buoyancy condition, yeah. I think it was really nice to feel some of the, the weight of the pack. And right. For um, this particular one, I'll hold it up so you can kind of sure. talk about it a little bit. Mm -hmm. You can block my face a bit there. Um, <laughs> so when you were doing this underwater simulation, obviously that's a lot of gear um, and it's heavy. Mm -hmm. So did they weight you out? The, and you said it was moonwalk. So they weight you out like it's equivalent to one six. They do. So yeah. there are two systems here. The first system that you dress into is a full diving operation system, and then from there you um, ingress into the spacesuit in the water. Oh. Okay. Okay. So the spacesuit is incredibly heavy. It is craned in and lowered into the water, mm -hmm. and it has. Um, we have, there's also a lunar lander facility. Yeah. So on the lunar lander platform, um, I go in as a diver as if I have traveled on that lander all the way. Okay. And then I will hop into my suit in the same way an astronaut would go through an airlock, dress in and exit their lander okay. or their rover, ready to go, ready to work out. So an EVA right. stands for extravehicular activity, so, or another word for spacewalk, and you're, you're ready to go. So one, once my team assists me getting into the advanced life support on my back, mm -hmm. um, it has, you can maybe see there's a whole lot of systems that I'm wearing. In addition to the life support systems, I have systems that are tethered to the surface. 
communication systems, um, there are biometric monitoring systems, so I'm wearing things that are measuring my heart rate, my mm -hmm. respiratory function, there's all sorts of communication lines and so on. And, um, and, I, and I'm tethered and ready to go. It, on the surface there is a buoy or a buoy that, uh, contain, that floats and contains um, Wi-Fi signals back to a support vessel, an enormous support vessel with a crew and mission control there. And in addition to that, so we have two operational teams running concurrently. One a diving and marine operation team, and the other is a space team. So we had uh, mission support from Bremen, mm -hmm. um, also engaged with the support for the astronauts and the ISS, supporting our mission underwater as well. In, in my headset, I would I only hear the operations from Bremen, and I am blinkered or blinded to the diving support team. Okay. They have their own separate comms line. Right. So there's no human fish around you. Kind that's of, it. Yeah. <laughs> because they don't exist in yeah. on the moon. And uh, interestingly, like I quite like it. Of the diving team, the diver one is mm -hmm. responsible for your air. Yeah. And they we call them angel. So whoever has that role is called angel. Mm -hmm. They are responsible solely for your air supply. Now, with my my gloves and the system, I can't adjust my air supply like I would as a diver. But an astronaut would would experience a very similar system limitation. Right. So Angel supports me in that way, and the other diver, Diver 2, is called MacGyver. That's a good title. It yeah. is a good title. <laughs> and MacGyver runs around fixing everything yeah. and making sure that there are no hazards. And uh, so in my mind, MacGyver's in the background uh, uh, yeah. approximately. So Angel would be within my arm's reach right. or closer, and MacGyver might be seven meters away. Right, okay. And this is... This is something that even NASA astronauts would do underwater in their neutral buoyancy right. facilities. Yeah. They have a diving team that they don't see as well. So it's up to you to transport yourself. So when we were here at the Mars Desert Research uh, Station going on EVA, uh, there, were, there was an opportunity for us to, to think about, just to sort of step into that world, Yeah. to, to leave behind um, some of the practicalities like gravity. <laughs> yeah. And um, and to really step into there's, the... There's a few things you can't match. I mean, an analog site, for those that don't know, is essentially something that matches as many variables as possible to a real mission. So for a Mars mission, you want you know the, a similar geology, uh, biology, potential sampling opportunities, um, similar formations, uh, uh, landing sites, all, all the kind of physical elements of where you are, but then of course being isolated, um, having protocols and operations that make it an analog simulation. So uh, this place really checks off a lot of those metrics and yeah, gravity, it's kind of hard to mimic unless you jump in a vomit comet and you know, you pull a parabola where you only have one third of the force. So, yes. yeah. I think what's, what's interesting for me as an artist in residence on a mission like this is I'm interested in human performance behaviors. So uh, I'm also interested in how we step into these roles and play out the socially coded nature of them. Mm -hmm. So it has a human factors impact kind of connection, uh, but it's also, it's more expressive. So how are we, particularly in an EVA, how are we, how are we performing? Hmm. Because um, it is more than the analysis of or the metrics of operation. We are humans and we are not ro robots and we bring a very particular personality to those roles. And it's often quite different to our behavior around the habitat itself. Mm -hmm. we, we ca our carriage is different because we have a pack. We have a very distinct purpose. We have a very different way of um, focusing because of the limitations of visual visualization. Our dexterity is altered. And um, so your carriage and gesture and motion is very different, but yep. also the dependencies on each other, or, the, or you know, in some cases, you know, ignoring each other as part of the crew getting distracted and wandering around, right. are, are, are possibly going to shift over the, the two weeks that we're here. Um, as we become more familiar with each other, as we become very familiar with the equipment, 
the systems and the landscape. Um, and ultimately, so some of the projects I'd like to do here are, uh, are teasing out some of these play and performance moments, these moments of improvisation, of experimentation, where we, which are leading to discovery and the human expressions of those in those moments. Like how can I capture that? How can I amplify that? How can I share that with the outside world? Um, these are not the sorts of things that come out of missions. Yeah. Or if they do, they're kind of coming out accidentally. Yeah, and it's usually for the benefit for many different outputs as well. It's not just yes. this. It, you know, yeah. arts is definitely a, a key one, a, the unexpected one that they're like, oh, this is fantastic. But um, I think they intuitively they know it's there though, all along. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's right. And yeah. we have an opportunity, say, in another ten days' time or so. Um, there's the opening ceremony for the Winter Olympics, and we thought, well, how could we... Do, do, do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's missing. I'm but Sarah's from Australia. Australia. I'm from Australia, yeah. and um, my patch will be on my, my garment very soon, so I apologise. <laughs> we have three national flags, so the, yeah. the Australian National Commonwealth flag, yeah. um, the Aboriginal and the Torres Strait Islander flag, which we'd like to get aligned on this suit. I'm very proud of where we've come from, and... And another thing, the interesting thing, so I'm from the land of the uh, Wurundjeri people in the Kulin Nation, which is Melbourne um, in southern Australia. And we're really interested here about the original peoples who right. are on this land. We've come to this place. Um, so in, in real terms, not in Mars terms, where we recognize the value of where we are, the history and the culture of where we are. This is um, it's a, an amazing geology, and you can see how people would gravitate here. Yeah, yeah. and um, and it it has that rich depth. So we we feel a, a, a sense of linkage to the lineage of people who have explored this place, mm -hmm. um, and protecting it while we explore it, so that other yes. people can enjoy it too. So, yes. Yeah. So you become, I guess that sense of custodianship is is there as well, not only within the research station, but within the landscape and, and mm -hmm. how we, we find some amazing samples and things, then we leave them there, we, we tag them with a GPS, we take a photo, um, but things remain where they are and mm -hmm. um, it's a really respectful, beautiful process. Yeah. So related to culture and uh, I want to kind of spin this conversation into outreach a little bit as well. Okay. Um, we just undertook a, a very uh, exciting and collaborative outreach project last night uh, across the crew with mission support, um, with yeah, colleagues around the world, and all over the place. So I'll, I'll just kind of use that as the intro for, okay. to let them let them know what, what do we do. <laughs> all right. Well, we had an amazing opportunity last night. So it was um, the 31st of January 2018, which was the super blood blue moon total yep. lunar eclipse. <laughs> so this, the last time this happened was 150 years ago, 148 years ago, I think. And uh, so it was really special. And we had, we were perfectly located to be able to experience um, right through to the to full total eclipse mm -hmm. here. And um, some of the end of the eclipse, uh, it, it sort of went past the hills of our horizon and yep. our habitat, but, but we could see the in initial phases right through as, uh, as you called it, the cookie. Oh, the well, cookie it started with like a cookie bite out of it almost. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> as the phase transition happened, it looked like it was getting eaten. Yeah. And um, oh, oh, oh. Up, eaten up, <laughs> and, it, and it turned this lovely kind of golden reddish hue, yeah. which is very Mars-like. Yeah, we so have a couple of photos through the lens, through a telescope that are just golden, like yeah. red, yeah. So I had the opportunity to collaborate with the Monash Immersive Visualization Platform, which is from Monash University, Australia. And they provided me with an Insta360 Pro camera. Mm -hmm. It's underneath this camera, otherwise we, we can, you <laughs> we, can Google it. And look you it can up. Google it. Yeah. Um, it's, see it again. it's a spherical, um, high, def incredibly high definition uh, camera that produces an 8K output, and it has six cameras around uh, the circumference of the device itself and they capture everything in a panoramic mm -hmm. 360 degree view that and um, with an incredible depth so that we can live stream that and uh, we can look we can use UV, um, 
VR headsets. Mm -hmm. I nearly said UV. <laughs> We're a bit sun conscious here. Yeah. And um, headsets to explore the total environment as that was going on. So we worked with a number of teams. We we had to MacGyver it, mm -hmm. as we said, to, to try and find out. There's like tons of different possible things. Like there's a whole spreadsheet or flow diagram here of. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Operations, yes. So we worked with the crew astronomer, uh, Julia de Marines, and we said, like, okay, we've got a camera like this with six lenses, but could we magnify one lens with a telescope mm -hmm. fitting? And that way, in the beautiful immersive environment, we have this portal into a, a high resolution, close up view of what we're seeing as well. So we tried that. We tried to um, install the camera yeah. we did in a, the observatory. We did a few creative um, ideas. The observatory <laughs> at the moment is, yeah. is not functioning, but we, we looked, was that the perfect placement? And in the end, the team came up with a solution where we could uh, install the camera out in the, the landscape with a full view of the habitat yeah. in relation to the lunar eclipse and we began that at about 4 40 a.m which enabled us just a few minutes of watching the moon in its normal phase transition into the partial eclipse so here in utah at 4 40 a.m yeah 4 48 a.m it became a partial eclipse and we could see we could see the red halo and then we we watched uh, the transition right through to about yeah. six, six, ten in the morning. It's really cool because I mean, as the shadow and the Terminator is marching across the moon, um, obviously the lighting and dynamics are all changing. It's distorting through the atmosphere, mm -hmm. but it kind of softens everything. So looking through the telescope, it's just you know instead of going from the overwhelmingly bright kind of reflection, you really start to see a lot of features, and it's just. Mm -hmm. You, you know, you're like, I just want this thing to stay in focus and hold it long enough to be there. And so I think it was a really cool uh, plan. And at least uh, the the idea and the footage behind it could lead to other big things similar to this as well. Yes. Yeah. I think it's a, an amazing engagement tool. Yeah. Um, not only for, for historic reasons and astronomy, but but also this this displacement. Uh, it's unusual to be able to be in a Mars-like environment, yeah. um, capturing a, an astronomical phenomena like that, um, and it, it gives it a human perspective. Yeah. And for us, I mean, it, it changed things. We're no longer looking at Earth's moon. It became something else. It changed color. And yeah. We could imagine it was Phobos or something. Yeah, and it'd be wild to have uh, two moons mm -hmm. in dynamic. Mm -hmm. You know situations who knows what kind of alignments that you might be able to yes. view from the surface of mars one day one day yeah uh, so, so so thank you i don't know if there's any kind of other thoughts that you want to like throw in there but um well i think uh, it's just the beginning it's only soul three we still have so like funny. we keep telling ourselves like oh man it's you know we've been doing a lot but it maybe we should sleep more and stretch it out but we have a lot to accomplish and a lot of cool projects so. We do, and I think uh, part of my role here is to support the research that is going on to work as a collaborative agent in, um, in these trans transdisciplinary research streams, but also to act a little bit of as a provocateur, so um, <laughs> inspiring uh, people to look at things a little differently, to, to be to disrupt their, their um, I guess their 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 sense of um, strict sense of research like to 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 note that it's okay to step into a mode of discovery you we, we are no longer working in university labs or employment contexts or what have you we have an opportunity here to go beyond those normal limitations and mm -hmm. to to step into a discovery mindset and that that requires some disruption and that requires some jolting so I do yeah. have things here I, I in my background I my kind of repertoire if you like I do a lot of live performance work and I do a lot of work for film even speculative fiction film mm -hmm. um, and these live art interactions that play on the human condition and the human responses to things so over the course of the next two weeks I won't get them too scared just yet <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of like what is she getting at <laughs> what, what is she talking about <laughs> they might be featuring in a few um, a few little creative exercises as well and and I think that helps um, 
us as a whole crew start to bond, to open up, um, to get a sense of each other and uh, what we can accomplish together to, as a team. Yeah, cool. Well, thank you very much. Um, stay tuned for future log updates and videos being posted. Uh, we've got a lot to share as uh, more, you know, what's really important to all of us is sharing what we're going through because there's, it's really cool stuff. Um, definitely going to do a hab walkthrough at some point. You're probably wondering where are we? You've probably never seen this room before if you've just seen the traditional hab. This is actually the science dome uh, with the great view. And um, so uh, yeah, I look forward to helping share that story. Fantastic. Well, yeah. you know you can always follow us on Facebook. You can connect with us on our website, isuonmars.com. Yeah. Um, we have Instagram, Twitter, you name it. Um, yep. Please engage with us. We love to hear stories from Earth as well. Uh, we have limited communications with the outside world and we are on, as you can imagine, the time delays between Mar Mars and Earth are significant. But any little sign of life is obviously a thrill for us and we will uh, send signs of life home as much as we can too. Cool. Don't forget to space suit up. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Hi, Rafi. I'm on Mars. Yay. <laughs> Bye.